You're listening to episode six of Liz's Healthy Table. Looking for a healthy new way to feed your family without the hassle and hype? Welcome to Liz's Healthy Table, where your host, registered dietitian nutritionist Liz Weiss, serves up fresh and flavorful recipes with a tasty side of science, good nutrition, and fun. Are you and your family ready for some wholesome food that tastes great too? Don't change that dial. Your food adventure starts here. Welcome to the show, everybody. Today, I will be talking about cooking with kids. Now, I know it can be messy because, you know, we've all experienced that broken egg on the floor or the dusting of flour all over the kitchen. In my case, a blueberry smoothie splattered across the ceiling. And yes, I had to hire a painter to paint it. But the benefits of cooking with kids, there's just so many benefits from expanding your child's palate to more mature flavors, to boosting their willingness to try new and nutritious foods. We talked about that on the Picky Eater show a couple weeks ago, and teaching them a skill that will serve them well throughout their entire lives. Joining me on the show with tips for getting kids of all ages into the kitchen is Diana Rice. She is a registered dietitian. She is with the Kids Cook Monday campaign and the voice behind the must-read family food blog, The Baby Steps Dietitian such an awesome blog. So head on over and check that out, but not till the show's over. Diana and I are going to talk about two recipes today. The first is a recipe you can absolutely make with your kids. It's for a hearty grain salad made with barley. And if you've never cooked with barley before, I'll talk you through it. English cucumbers, tomatoes, feta cheese, and fresh fragrant basil. Love that recipe. And then we're also going to talk about a recipe for cheesy zucchini black bean skillet. So this is like a one pot meal. And you know, if you have a four year old at home, your four year old even can be your sous chef with this recipe. It is that easy. So stand by for those and stand by for Diana because just a couple quick friendly reminders that for all the show notes from today's show, you can head on over to Liz's Healthy Table. And then on my podcast page, I'll have all the notes, all the resources, everything we talk about today. And then on the blog, we will have the recipe for the barley salad. So you'll have two posts to kind of check out for this podcast. If you really want to get in with Liz and be part of my podcast posse, then when you're on the podcast page, you'll notice a little button on the right side and it says join the posse. It's a closed group on Facebook. Just head on over, click join, and I will welcome you in. So I'd love to have you. And then if you enjoy the show, head on over to iTunes and post a review. That would be a big favor. Thank you very much. I also want to thank today's sponsors. I've got sponsors for our show, and it just makes the show possible. So I cannot thank them enough. First off, Zespri Kiwi Fruit. They are the global leader in premier quality kiwi fruit. And I don't know if you've seen these, but they're in the market now. Zespri Sun Gold Kiwi Fruit. It's a special type of kiwi. It's tropically sweet. It's got a smooth skin. You can eat the skin. These sun golds are so juicy, so naturally sweet. They're yellow. I am addicted to them. I have them on my kitchen counter right now. Great for a snack. You just slice them in half and then just scoop the fruit out with a spoon. And like I said, you can eat the skin. So this is something that I am addicted to. Like I said, if you want to learn more, check them out at zespriekiwi.com. I'd also like to thank bushbeans.com and Bush's Beans are a sponsor. And I love their products because they're versatile, you know, black beans, pinto beans, we're going to use black beans in today's recipe, very inexpensive, which is great when you're trying to add more protein to your family's diet, you don't want to spend a ton of money. So really nutritious, high in fiber, love them, check them out at bushbeans.com. They have a lot of recipes on their site as well. And then as always, I like to give a shout out to my friends at superhealthykids.com. If you want to cook with your kids more, which I hope you'll want to do after you listen to the show today, they have so many recipes. They've got meal plans. They are my online friends for life, superhealthykids.com. All right, enough about me. Let's go ahead and welcome Diana Rice to Liz's Healthy Table. Welcome, Diana. Hi, Liz. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to talk about my favorite subject. Which is? 
cooking with kids. Yay. <laughs> tell everybody, Diana, I've known you for years, but obviously my listeners don't know you. Just tell everybody a little bit about yourself. You're a dietitian, you're a mom. Give us the backstory. Sure. Well, I'm a registered dietitian now. However, that wasn't my first career. I actually started out in media like you did. You did. And- Yeah, I live in New York City and I work in print media for a little while, um, just doing general, you know, women's publications, general interest. And I didn't know my own interest in nutrition actually until I got married and I was suddenly providing food for someone else. And I realized how passionate I was about that. So as I started cooking more for my husband, I started getting more and more into nutrition, realized that I wanted to write about nutrition in the media. And I wanted to do it from a place of authority. So, you know, I had to go back to school. I had to become a registered dietitian. And all along, I knew that in particular, my interest was family nutrition and cooking with kids. And so I actually was able to craft my nutrition studies via part-time jobs where I was teaching after school cooking classes like at YMCA's and then via my dietetic internship which is the year long study that students studying to be registered dietitians have to do in order to become certified every opportunity i could find to focus on family nutrition and cooking with kids i incorporated that into my dietetic studies and then you know i finished i passed the rd exam became an rd and just immediately started working with organizations that do what I love, promoting family meals and cooking with kids. And one of those is the Kids Cook Monday, which is a project of Monday Campaigns, which is a nonprofit. They're also behind Meatless Monday. Right, uh, right. And for those of you, and last week's show we talked, or two weeks ago, we talked about adding more meatless meals to your diet. So the Meatless Monday campaign. And so it's part of Meatless Monday. I don't think people uh, realize that. The Kids well, Cook Monday. They're like brother and sister campaigns. The organization is called the Monday Campaigns. They are in partnership with Johns Hopkins, Syracuse, and Columbia Universities. And via those academic partnerships, the Monday Campaigns develops and promotes, you know, sort of these advertising strategies to capture the attention of the public and get them to make healthy choices, all revolving around this, what we call the Monday effect. Which is, <laughs> the Monday, the it, Monday it, effect is I need it, to sleep late. I'm tired for the so weekend. <laughs> but what's so interesting about it is that, you know, you think everybody hates Mondays, but the organization has actually studied this, conducted research in partnership with the academic partners and found that the majority of people actually see Monday very positively. They see it as a fresh start, a time to make a change for good. And so the organization's mission is to capitalize on that mindset and give people tools and resources they need to introduce these healthy changes. So Meatless Monday is one of them. But as I was saying, family nutrition is my passion. And what I love about the Kids Cook Monday is that it's providing tools to families to start doing this every week, cooking together and eating together. So back up for a second. I'm going to ask you a few more questions about the Kids Cook Monday. But you told us you're a dietitian. You told us you've been passionate about cooking with kids ever since you married your husband. Now, if I was a therapist, I'd really probe into that one. Like, okay. She gets married. Now she wants to cook for kids. But we'll just move on from that. But anyway, I know you've got a child. You've, yeah. got, you've got one kid on the way. How old's your child? You have a daughter, uh, right? Or I, son? I, no. Yeah, no, I have a daughter. She's going to turn two years old in just a little over a week. I can't believe it. And I am also pregnant with my second kid. If all goes according to plan, I will have this kid in one month. Another little girl. So Congratulations. I, Thank you so much. I'm so excited to have them both in the kitchen with me. So do you currently cook with your daughter? She's almost two, you said. I do. And you know what? I've been cooking with her since she's about 18 months old. I wish I started sooner. I was so surprised with what she could do at 18 months old. And, you know, being in this field for a long time, I had always kind of recommended age two as the starting point before I had kids myself. And then I just realized, you know, how excited she is to be there in the kitchen with me. And that's not to say, you know, whenever she was like nine months old, if I was cooking and I'm making black beans, I'll put a few black beans on her plate or something like that. But, you know, even though she's not even two, she can practically chop an onion. I'm not even kidding. (laughs) She can't chop it well. (laughs) She doesn't have that perfect half-inch dice is what you're saying. 
<laughs> you, um, but you've got her in the kitchen, which I think is fantastic. And, you know, people often think that, you know, I said at the beginning of the show that it's either too messy or it's just too overwhelming, but that's a barrier. But before we get into the barriers, because I know we could just break through those barriers, but what are some of the benefits? You know, we always say, you know, if you cook with your kids, they're more likely to try new foods. Is mm-hmm. that lip service or is there really science behind that? And what are some of the other benefits to cooking with kids? It's definitely a documented effect that when kids have a tactile experience with foods, I think about it from the kid's perspective. Something just is placed on a plate in front of them and they've never seen it before. Like say it's okra or something that, you know, maybe they haven't come across in their life before. And they're like, they don't even know if it's food technically. So when you get them into the kitchen or even, you know, go way before that and get them into the garden, they can see where this food comes from, what the properties of it are, what the benefits of it are. As an example, strangely, I guess I don't buy apples very often. My husband doesn't like them, so I just don't keep them in the house. And so the first time that I offered my toddler an apple a couple weeks ago, it was at someone else's house and she wouldn't touch it. She loves fruit. She loves it. And she would not touch this apple slice. And I'm like, I got a weird kid on my hands here. What's going on? And so the next day, I went out and bought the same kind of apple, green apple, and I sliced it in half and I gave half to her with her little safety knife. She was able to, you know, bang around on it. And with my knife, I sliced a slice that she could eat. And just from that experience of, you know, physically handling it, she was happy to eat it. And now she, she probably it. saw you eating it too, right? <laughs> yeah, that's a big part of it is modeling the healthy behaviors yourself. But it's not just that kids will try new foods. I mean, they, on the whole, they'll have more nutritious diets. I mean, I'm talking about a two-year-old, but this really applies to kids of any age. And it's extra important that when they grow up and they're no longer living with mom and dad, I know you just had some boys leave the house, Mm -hmm. (laughs) that they've got those skills to feed themselves uh, healthy, nutritious, affordable food rather than going to a restaurant or especially a fast food restaurant every time they find themselves hungry. If they've been learning all along, just like they learned, you know, how to balance their bank account, you know, that's an important life skill. If they've learned how to cook for themselves, then they're able to have more nutritious diets later in life. So cooking skills are associated with lower body weights. Another benefit I really love is that cooking is not just about food and nourishment, but there's a lot of math and science that goes into it. So they're able to take some of the academic learnings from school and bring it home, bring it into the kitchen. You know, how many tablespoons are in a cup? That's multiplication. How does an egg white coagulate? You know, that's science. So things like that are they see real world practical applications of them. And they're like, wow, you know, this is so cool. And they're excited about it rather than feeling like it's a drag. Right. And one of the other benefits, too, is just building a child's confidence. You know, when a kid learns how to ride their bike without training wheels or tie their shoelace or potty train even, they feel so good about themselves. So you can imagine a child who's actually helped the parent or the caregiver, the grandparent, make muffins, for example, or pancakes. Yeah. And when they put those muffins on a tray and they walk them over to the rest of the family, they're beaming, you know, because this is something that they had a hand in. Or, you know, think about if the child and the mom are cooking something for dad for Father's Day, you know, maybe the kid can't go out, you know, if they're young, they can't go out and buy a present, but they've made something for dad, which is even better, in my opinion. Yeah, I love that. And, you know, really doesn't even matter, like you said, how old your child is. And, you know, you've got a child who's almost two, and now you're starting to cook with her. But give us sort of an overview view of sort of the ages and stages, because what can a two-year-old do? What can a 12-year-old do? So kind of talk us through starting with the little ones, and then we'll kind of build from there. Yeah. So like I was saying, you know, the most important thing is to have them in the kitchen with you. And as a side note, as a parent of a toddler, I personally just like to have her stationary in the high chair while I'm cooking. (laughs) And, you know, passing her a big leaf of basil to quote unquote chop, you know, it's fun for her. And for me, you know, it keeps her in one place while I'm juggling a lot of things. So I suggest to parents just get the kids in the kitchen, you know, as soon as they start solid foods, honestly, they're not going to be cooking necessarily, but they're going to be feeling out the different foods that are going into the family meal. And then around 18 months, two years, I would suggest getting a child safe knife 
They're these plastic serrated knives. And just same thing, you've been handing them food all along that you're cooking with. Now they get to quote unquote chop just like mommy or daddy. And, you know, they're participating in the experience, even though they're not truly contributing to the meal. But then moving up from, you know, actually age two and three, things they can do are, you know, washing produce, squeezing lemons, you know, you can show them how to use a salad spinner. That's always fun. Yeah, that is really Really, fun. Really fun. They probably won't want to stop (laughs) and take this out out of the spinner, right? (laughs) You know, ripping up, you know, whether it's kale or basil or something like that. They love to use like a pepper grinder, using a rolling pin. I mean, keep in mind, they're not necessarily going to be rolling out the entire pizza dough at age three, but they are going to be empowered because they helped mom or dad do it. So at that age, they're not really going to be helping you necessarily, but it's still, I think, really important skill for them, really important way to spend quality time together, especially if you're a working parent and you know you only have a couple of hours with the kids in the evening. Well, instead of parking them in front of the TV, while you, you know, rush to prepare dinner, get them into the kitchen with you. And then you're spending time together on a task that benefits everyone, which is the family meal. We can talk about, you know, age four and five, moving on up. That's when they can actually start maybe making a true contribution, whether it's using measuring spoons, measuring cups, you know, they can sort of shape dough into patties or like if you're making like veggie burgers, or they can make the patties, you know, mixing, stirring a big bowl, getting their hands in there to smush something together. And Diana, one thing I always recommend too, and I do a lot of cooking classes with kids through a program called Kids Cooking Green here in Lexington, Massachusetts, where I Mm. live. And Lori Deliso runs that program, and I've got to get her on the show one of these days. I promise to do that. But what we do with the kids a lot of times is that because they're cutting and they're using plastic knives, and maybe a real knife, depending if they're a little bit older, we'll take wet paper towels. And we'll put them under the cutting board, and that prevents the cutting board from sliding all over the place. So that's a safety thing. And the other thing we do, too, is that when we're using bowls that the kids are, say, mixing or whisking ingredients together, we will always make sure we use a flat-bottomed large mixing bowl. Because otherwise, you know what happens, right? The bowls yeah, definitely. all over the place. So those are like some just little tips and tricks. Or even if you're mixing a salad dressing and I did this in the salad we'll talk about in a few minutes, I will use a little mason jar where you could use a little plastic container and with a lid, shake it up rather than whisking in a bowl. And that's so much fun for kids. So even that four and five-year-old can absolutely help you make a salad dressing. Yes, definitely. We actually do that when we do Kids Cook Monday events in elementary schools is, you know, we'll have different teams of parents and kids sitting at all the tables and one kid will do the vinegar and one kid will do the olive oil and then they all get a turn to shake it up in a mason jar and they have a lot of fun with it. And what about knife skills? You know, at what point does a child get a plastic knife, a real knife, you know, metal, and how can you keep kids safe with knives? Yeah. So this is actually an issue of contention in the cooking with kids community. (laughs) when. Is the child ready for a real knife? And the bottom line is that the parent knows the child best. They know if they're the type of kid who's going to run off into the living room with a knife in hand, or if they're a very you know, attentive child who's going to really take on the responsibility. So the first thing I would recommend is to just, you know your kid, you know when they're going to be ready. Certainly it's going to be sometime in the late elementary school into middle school time frame at the earliest, I think. But these child safe plastic knives, sometimes I just use them if my daughter's sitting on my lap and I don't want her little fingers to get into whatever I'm chopping. I'll just use them and I don't have any problem chopping almost maybe I couldn't do like a butternut squash or something like that. <laughs> you know, even onions or broccoli, I don't really have much problem using those tools as an adult. So if you purchase one of those and the kid is able to use it, then they're going to be able to do almost any task. So, you know, it's just see, definitely start with one of those. You know, you can move on to like a butter knife, a metal butter knife or something like that and see how the kid does with it. And you'll know like, when your child is ready, but don't start them off with it, even if you're older. And you talked to Diana about keeping your fingers safe, no matter what kind of knife you're using. And this is a good tip for adults too. So listen up to Diana here. She knows the deal. Yeah. You know, one skill that I like to teach kids when I teach children's cooking classes or other parents 
is called the bear claw method. And it's a really fun skill to teach to kids because they get to you say, all right, now everybody knows what a bear is? Okay. Now put your hands up like you're a grizzly bear and you're going, grr, and you know, you picture you've got the five fingers and they're all bent towards the palm, grr, like a bear. Then you instruct them to put the bear claw onto what they're about to chop. So it could be like a zucchini or something soft and easy to chop. And they're going to brace the food with their bear claw. So this keeps the fingertips out of the way of the knife. Then with your dominant hand, you're going to take the knife, you know, grip it around the base, almost like the bottom hand on a baseball bat. And with a lever-like motion, starting with the tip of the knife above the food, you're going to chomp down (laughs) and repeat. And you repeat that until you get maybe, you know, for a kid, I would say like an inch away from fingertips or more and then you let everything go and you start again and you make your bear claw and you move it down the food and you chop 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 until you get close to the fingers again until you're at the end of the vegetable or whatever it was that you were chopping and the kids probably really respond to that i would imagine yeah because it's so fun who wouldn't want to be a grizzly bear girl <laughs> i don't want to be a grizzly bear i'd rather be a <laughs> kitty cat personally but hey That's whatever true. But we're talking about rambunctious little kids. Yeah, I get it. I get it. You know, when my boys were younger, I always tried to encourage them to cook. And this is the true confession from Liz Weiss here. I was so busy when the boys were younger testing recipes for all my cookbooks. I was constantly cooking and the kids were tasting and trying all my creations. And so they got a taste of so many different foods and they have fabulous palates to this day eat everything. But where I went wrong was that with Josh, my older one, I did not cook with him enough in the kitchen. With Mm. Simon, we cooked more. And so now, you know, we were talking about this lifelong skill. Now I have Josh, Mr. Wall Street, who says, Oh, just hire people to help me cook. Oh, I'm just gonna go out to eat. And this guy, I'm like, dude, like you can slice the kiwi in half and scoop Mm. it out with a spoon. And so the yesterday, Simon was like, Mom, I'm gonna have to slice the kiwi in half for Josh. Mom, I've got to peel the banana for Josh. You know, I'm making an egg sandwich for Josh. So Simon, the younger one, is really great about making smoothies. And I mentioned this at the top of the show when he was younger, he was making a smoothie and he really packed it with frozen wild blueberries. And I said, oh, honey, I kind of have too many blueberries in there, but I didn't want to kind of squash his creativity. Mm -hmm. There was so much in there. He turned the blender off, took the lid off, and then stuck in a spatula just to kind of move ingredients around. There was like an air bubble in there. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing blew up like a volcano and got all over the ceiling. I mean, these blueberries were everywhere. And I seriously did have to hire a painter. (laughs) So that was... I've never had anyone drop a dozen eggs. I mean, everybody has like a war story. In fact, I should really put this on Facebook and ask people to share their best stories. It's just so funny. And you just have to have fun with it. You just got to go with it. And I really love what you were saying about, you know, you didn't want to squash his hopes and dreams of making this amazing (laughs) smoothie. You know, that's part of empowering kids in the kitchen is say you're following a recipe and they want to put, you know, twice as much basil in the recipe calls for. Well, give it a shot, you know, maybe not twice as much jalapeno peppers, but let them have some autonomy there and some control and they're going to enjoy the process that much more. Well, Simon had a friend over a couple weeks ago, they're 18, and they were making smoothies and they put in, I'm not even making this up, frozen shelled edamame. Hmm. I'm like, okay, I guess, you know, people put beans in smoothies. So there you go. And they said it was pretty good. I did have a little taste. (laughs) <laughs> didn't really notice it. So just like, whatever, go for it. So as kids get older, they get more comfortable in the kitchen. If someone's listening to the show and they're like, oh my gosh, I have a 12-year-old. I missed that window of opportunity. Is it ever too late to get your kids into the kitchen cooking with you? I don't personally think so. And a really great strategy to start with if the kid is older and they're at a reading level is to ask them what do they want to cook don't just say hey 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 I'm making dinner come on over here you're going to help me no 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 you're going to say hey what do you think about checking out this cookbook we've had on the shelf or going to the bookstore and buying a new cookbook flipping through the pages and you pick something and we're going to go to the grocery store together and We're going to buy all the ingredients and, you know, you can make some of the decisions about the ingredients and then we're going to come home and cook this together. What do you think about that? 
And that way, again, like we've been talking about, the kid is empowered. They have some control over it. They don't think it's such a drag, like, oh, mom's dragging me into the kitchen to do more chores. You know, it doesn't become a chore. It's a family activity that you do together. And that's actually a resource that the Kids Cook Monday really aims to provide via the family dinner date newsletter, which is that's a free newsletter that goes out every week. And it's also archived on the Kids Cook Monday website. So you can browse through there for these kind of recipes that I'm talking about. And it's all, you know, not just a recipe, but like engaging tips to keep the family chatting and learning while they're cooking together. So I'm on the Kids Cook Monday website right now. So it's the kidscookmonday.org. And just so people know, when they go to this website, they will find recipes, they'll find this guide to cooking with kids, the various ages and stages. You've got a list of all the benefits. You have the newsletter that you just mentioned. And then you have also school programs. And so tell us a little bit about those school programs. Is this something that listeners can tap into? In other words, cook with their kids at home with your resources, but also bring it to their local schools? Yeah, definitely. We love to help schools get started with the Kids Cook Monday. So basically... What we do is we provide the free resources, which is, you know, the how to's and the recipes and my expertise if they need any hand holding. And then depending on where they are in the country, we recommend that they find a local dietitian or, you know, a chef, someone who's very knowledgeable about cooking to come in and lead a class in the cafeteria, which is often organized by the PTA. And get everyone excited about, we call it the family dinner cooking night, and get everyone excited about, you know, one of these easy recipes that we have available. And then from there, we encourage them to take this new healthy habit home, try it out every Monday with the resources the Kids Cook Monday provides via the newsletter and the other resources on our website. I'll also have the option to get our free printables. So the newsletter, you know, it's an email format, but the same information is available in dozens of PDF printables. These are things that schools can print and put into the student's backpack. You could announce every Monday morning over the announcements, you know, hey, it's Kids Cook Monday. Tonight we're making cheesy zucchini black bean skillet. Pick up your copy of the recipe next to the principal's office, things like that. And then so we really support our school partners. And we're actually just wrapping up a pilot program that incorporated everything I just discussed. We partnered with the organization Food Corps. They're called the Food Corps Service Members. It's basically like AmeriCorps, but specifically for food and schools. And their service members have been leading these family cooking nights in schools across the country, getting the families excited about cooking together every Monday, if not more often than that, and going home with the resources that I discussed and, you know, what the Monday Campaigns is all about is, is habit change. So if they haven't been cooking together as a family in the past, we hope that the Kids Cook Monday School program encourages them to start that healthy habit. I love it. And, you know, one thing I would love, it's never going to happen. Maybe it will. I don't want to be a pessimist. But I would love for home economics to come back to school. My mom was a home ec teacher. She went to NYU. She studied oh. home economics. And so I grew up hanging out with her and helping her in the kitchen. And I was always very intrigued by where she went to eat with my dad. I was just a foodie from a young age. And I think being with her in the kitchen really did rub off on me in a big way. So imagine if every kid in this country had to take home ec, a.k.a. cooking, sewing, like you said earlier, balancing a checkbook, just all these (laughs) skills that make you, the individual, at home function better, right? Like we all need to know how to do laundry. I know. I, I'm happy to report my boys who can <laughs> do laundry, even Josh. Yeah. He folds a mean t shirt. Awesome. But just those skills. But hey, it's a pipe dream. I would love that. I agree. And I think we're starting to see it come back a little. They don't call it home economics anymore. They call it family and consumer sciences. And it's not all cooking based and not every school has it because you know kids have so much they've got to cram into their brains these I days. I know, I They're know. Happy. But there's after school programs. A lot of schools are starting to incorporate gardening and cooking lessons, even if it's not part of the curriculum or they're making it part of the curriculum. Mm -hmm. They're they're using those as platforms to teach the kids math and science. So I think we're seeing really great stuff with that. So let's switch gears and talk food because this show (laughs) is about food. After all, I am a big believer that a recipe can really take people from you know, a ho-hum diet to just a stellar A-plus diet. Because once they taste something like this zucchini black bean skillet, all of a sudden, hey, it tastes great. It was easy to make. 
and it's so nutritious. It's packed with vegetables. In this recipe, you've got zucchini, bell pepper, you have black beans. So Diana, tell us this recipe, cheesy zucchini, black bean skillet. Tell us about the ingredients people will need for this recipe. And again, I will have this in the show notes on Mm -hmm. Liz's Healthy Table. Okay, great. Yeah, you start out with some cooked rice. So maybe that's something you can do if you're meal prepping on the weekends or I personally actually buy frozen rice. I do too. Uh, it's a little ironic that I'm Diana Rice, the dietitian, and I don't even like to cook rice. <laughs> but do you like brown rice or white rice? I like brown rice. I actually think it tastes better. And you can buy frozen brown rice as well. I and mean, that's what this recipe calls for. And you're going to have about one large zucchini, one green bell pepper or any color that you want, Mm -hmm. some vegetable stock, one can of black beans, one can of fire roasted diced tomatoes. Um, Those have got a little extra flavor because of the fire roasting. One cup of cheddar cheese, some cloves of garlic, some crushed red pepper, which is optional. And then, you know, your standard, you know, olive oil, salt and pepper to taste. And what I really love about in addition to it being a one pot meal, I really love that the zucchini and the green pepper are, I call them like starter vegetables for kids cooking. You know, they're pretty soft. You can definitely cut them with a plastic knife. So that's one thing that the kids could be doing while the adults are over at the stove, heating up the oil and frying the garlic a little. And then the kids can add what they just chopped to the pan. And then together, the adult and kids can open the cans. The other thing is just, you know, when you're using canned foods, how much easier does your recipe get? (laughs) You open the canned beans and the fire roasted tomatoes, pour those right in a little bit of vegetable stock. You cook for five minutes and then you cover it and let it stand a little bit. Then you add the cheese. What kid is not going to love sprinkling cheese all over a dish? (laughs) And then it gets all, all melty and you eat it almost just like a casserole. You know, it's just all these really great flavors packed together. And what I love about it as a dietitian, of course, is you got your whole grains, your vegetables, your protein, some great flavors from, you know, the garlic and chili peppers. I just think it's a really well-rounded recipe and a great family dish. So basically, the zucchini and the bell pepper, those you probably want to cut up into little pieces so you could just dice them. Mm -hmm. And, And then they saute so they get really soft. And one thing I've always told parents is that, you know, if you feel like your kids are a little bit skittish, then just cut the veggies really tiny, saute till they're really soft, and then you just sort of build from there. And I love this recipe too, because I'm sure the rice just kind of absorbs the fire roasted tomato juices. You've got the gooiness of the cheese. You could kind of kick up the flavor a little bit more if you wanted to. You could add cumin and chili powder. I'm not a huge crushed red pepper fan. I definitely steer more towards like garlic, onion, chili powder, cumin. And my boys never loved spicy food. So Mm -hmm. that's sort of the direction I would go in. But I just think it sounds great. And then one thing too, you drain and rinse the beans and that Mm -hmm. washes away 40% of the sodium, which is always nice, right? We're trying to kind of keep the sodium level down because we all eat way too much sodium. Of course. And, but it's also a great task for kids, you know, especially because it doesn't happen at the stove. They can be the ones turning on the faucet and rinsing the beans off. It's oh, great. yeah. Pour it into a colander and then have the kids rinse the beans. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. I like that, I like that yeah. idea a lot. I love that, you know, it says um, one zucchini and one green bell pepper in this recipe. But if you're at the store and the yellow and red bell peppers just look fantastic, ask your kids, which one do you want to get? You know, what colors should we put in the meal? Same with the zucchini. You could use a yellow squash instead if you're at the farmer's market and you're just looking at looking around to see what's good. Mm, yeah, definitely going shopping with your kids, bring them to the farmer's market. And then of course, in the heat of summer, everybody ends up with way too much zucchini in their gardens. And Mm -hmm. so this will be a very good recipe for people to turn to when they're trying to unload a couple zucchini. Yeah, definitely. Add an extra zucchini. It only calls for one, but just throw another one right on in there. (laughs) And we all know everybody always ends up through the season, if they have a garden with one of these like giant bionic zucchini, mm-hmm. somehow just keeps growing. And then you finally find it and you're like, what the heck is that? Yep. Yeah. Happens every year. <laughs> I do not have a green thumb personally, but I do love going to the farmer's market. So, hey, you can't do it all, right? Right. And zucchini is really affordable at far- farmer's markets. It could be like $1.50 or something for one whole zucchini. So yeah. stock up. 
That's right. Now, the other recipe is this hearty barley salad with cucumbers, tomatoes, and arugula. And I sort of created this recipe the other day, and I had kids in mind as I did it. I was actually inspired to create the recipe because when I was at Josh's college graduation at University of Delaware, he and his housemates, and I will not tell you what this house looked like, Diana, you literally (laughs) would have cried. Okay. Probably would have. Yeah, you have a little girl, one on the way. I've got the college student. Well, now he's graduated, but oh my goodness. Anyway, they had a cookout, and one of the moms, the other moms, brought this really delicious couscous salad. And she used that Israeli couscous, the pearled couscous. Yeah. And that's pasta, and I love pasta. But I thought, hmm, for this one, I really want to up the fiber and get the whole grains in. So I was at Trader Joe's. I was not buying my frozen rice, thank you very much, but I was buying this 10-minute barley that they have. Mm. And they also do a 10-minute farro and a 10-minute bulgur. And what it is, is it's pearled, which means they've taken off like that outer husk, which is really tough, because barley Mm. can take a long time to cook, and people often get intimidated by that. Right. So it's a bag of 10-minute barley. Look for it if you have a Trader Joe's in the area, or just go to the market and get pearled barley. And then just, I took a cup and a half, I just cooked it according to the package directions, which of course was 10 minutes. And then I drained it. But in the meantime, I cut up half an English cucumber. I peeled it, but you don't have to peel it. Just cut it into like half inch dice. Your kids can totally help with this. I took a tomato. I cut it into quarters and then into eighths. And then I just took a knife and I kind of took out the seeds. And I think you were saying, Diana, we had an email exchange that totally kids can help with that part, taking the seeds out. Yeah, get all the goop out of there. Get the goop out. No goop. Kids don't like goop. And so then I diced the tomato up because I will say that my kids don't love tomatoes. Mm. But in a salad like that, they're tiny and red. And it could be a bell pepper, too. You could do a red or a yellow bell pepper. I actually did throw in half a half a yellow bell pepper. And then I took arugula, a couple cups of arugula, and I just sort of chopped it up. And arugula's got a nice kind of peppery flavor. Yeah. Kids could totally it. be like tasting as you go. Mm-hmm. And then basil, a couple handfuls of basil. And your kids could rip the basil up into little pieces kind of better than chopping in a way because when you chop it it sort of oxidizes and gets brown or black right yeah have the kids do that and then i've added feta cheese i love (laughs) feta cheese yeah kids do too usually because it's salty (laughs) yeah this is kind of where you don't really need a lot of salt and pepper because you've got the you've got the feta and then the Mm -hmm. dressing is so easy so it's the juice of a lemon the zest of half a lemon or you could add the zest of a whole lemon third cup olive oil and a little pepper a little salt. I like to use kosher salt. And I put the ingredients in a little mason jar and then shook it up. And this, again, is where kids can totally help. They won't want to stop shaking and actually put it in the dish. They want to just keep shaking it, in my experience. I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> well, you can keep your kids shaking. You know, Let them go shake while you add the mm-hmm. final bits to the recipe. But you want the, the grain to cool. So kind of room temperature. And then everything goes into a bowl. Stir it all up. You got all these veggies, you've got the barley, which by the way, is packed with fiber. And then you just drizzle, your kids could do this, drizzle the dressing on top and just stir it all together. And you could bring this as a side salad to a cookout, you could have it with dinner, you could add grilled chicken to it. Just Mm. I did that for Josh today. He's studying for this big test. And I said, Hey, when you go to the library, here's a salad, let's add some leftover chopped chicken to it. And Hey, he's 22 and he loves it. And I know your little kids will love it too, Mm -hmm. whoever's listening out there. So you get four grams of fiber in every serving. And most people just do not eat enough fiber. So, and you're getting all these great veggies and it's really flexible. You can add more cucumber. You could add bell pepper. You could add mint if you have mint in your garden. Anything goes. Yeah. I love what you're saying about how it adds some simply grilled chicken and suddenly you've got a complete meal with your whole grains and your vegetables and your protein and just put it on the table. And I think too, when the kids are helping, especially with a recipe like this, they've probably never tried barley, but they've probably had pasta, right? They've had macaroni. They've had maybe ditalini, the little tubes. They've had maybe orzo. And the barley really looks like little bits of pasta. So it's kind of a, it's a gateway grain, easy to get kids into the whole grain thing, because it's just so kind of familiar looking. 
Yeah. And it's something new. And, you know, you can talk about how, you know, you know how we have pasta so much. Well, now we're going to try something that's like pasta, but you know, it's even better because X, Y, Z. Mm-hmm. It's got a nice texture, nice chewy texture. I love it. So super yummy. So we've got two recipes for everybody. Again, head on over to Liz's Healthy Table for that barley salad. And then compliments of the Kids Cook Monday will bring over that zucchini recipe and you'll have that as well. And like I said, hit up the kidscookmonday.org for so many recipes. I've actually contributed a few over the years. So it's been fun being part of it. Yeah, we'd love to feature your recipes because you're, you're designing them with families in mind. That's right. And my kiddos in mind. Ooh. So I like to ask everybody this couple questions at the end of my podcast, Diana, about what cookbooks they think every parent, caregiver, grandparent should have on their bookshelf when they're trying to feed their kids a healthy diet. So my go-to, and I have a lot of cookbooks because this is my life, right? (laughs) But one that I keep pulling off the shelf is Mark Bittman's How to Cook Everything, which, you know, that makes sense. If you're going to have just one cookbook, it might as well be how to cook everything because it'll give you a technique for, you know, grilling that chicken when you don't necessarily need a whole entire recipe because you already know you want to pair it with a barley salad or something like that. But even better than that book for parents is Bittman's How to Cook Everything Fast, which is smaller. It doesn't have quite as many recipes. But what I love, love, love about it is that um, he doesn't list ingredients, you know, one medium onion, comma, diced. He will just put one onion in the ingredients list. And then in the preparation steps, he'll say, dice the onion. And to me, that's really important when you're thinking about how much time you have in the evening. You know, sure, if you could just throw, you know, diced onions and black beans and whatever together, you could actually make a recipe in probably 30 seconds. But you've got to do all that prep. And, you know, just because it's not written into the recipe doesn't mean that it's not going to take you time to do it. So I love that those steps are incorporated into the recipe instructions. And I especially love it because oftentimes those are the steps that kids are able to complete. If other things are happening at the stove, well, the mincing and dicing are the things that the kids are going to be able to do. So you can look at the recipe as a family and decide, okay, you're going to do this step and you know I'm going to do this step, which is actually another thing that the recipes on the kidscookmonday.org have is it says, you know, parents preheat the oven, kids mix the batter or something oh, like that. I love that. that. Yeah, I think that really does help people. And I've got a gal named Pam who's in my podcast, Posse. She's got six kids. And she <laughs> says that one of her ways to get her kids to try new foods is to cook with them. And you're a mom of six. That's a lot of food every night. So she <laughs> gets them all helping, even setting the table. And it just keeps everybody focused. And it just makes dinner so much more fun. It's not a chore. It's just a fun family activity. Yeah, because it's quality time together. And we haven't even gotten into all the benefits of family dinners, you know, which I know uh-huh. that you know. <laughs> Yeah, right. It does get families together around the table because if you've made the meal together, you're more likely to sit and eat it together. That's because Kids Cook Monday's tagline is the family that cooks together eats together. Oh, I like that. So we've got Mark Bittman now. I think I need to have him on the podcast. I think I better shoot him an email. Uh-huh. But he's actually here in Boston right now. Oh, really? Yeah. So maybe I'll track him down. And as far as I have another question, and that is, is there a chef or a foodie or a cookbook author out there, somebody that you just would love to meet or someone you look up to and really admire? Yes, definitely. I have a few. But the first one that comes to mind to me is actually someone that I have worked with. It's our fellow registered dietitian, Sally Kazemchek of the blog Real Mom Nutrition. A few weeks ago, she posted on her blog about doing the Kids Cook Monday with her sons, which I was you know, really excited to see that she wanted to participate because I think she just does such a great job of modeling what really feeding a family is all about. You know, it's not all, hey, I make healthy food and boom, my kids eat it and there's no problem after that. Right. AKA oh. we're perfect, which we <laughs> know does not exist. Right. So I think she does a really great job and her recipes are really simple. You know, one or two of her recipes are on the kidscookmonday.org as well. And just as a dietitian, you know, I hope to lead a similar path. I focus on slightly younger kids as the baby steps dietitian. But I think that the work that she's doing has really inspired a lot of families 
families to get into the kitchen and serve their families nutritious food, which I think is really important. And of course, you know, Liz, you and Janice with the Meal Makeover Moms, you were doing the exact same thing mm-hmm. as well. So I could also say I could for also a, make, long time, a, <laughs> for a long, long time, a long time. But then if we're talking about, you know, celebrity chef crushes, mine is Nigella Lawson, the British chef who used to have a show on the Food Network. I actually save episodes of her show on my DVR so that when I'm not feeling well or I just need some comforting, I just watch those same episodes (laughs) over and over. I know exactly what she's going to make. And I just love her British voice and then her kids. (laughs) come running into the kitchen and they're so excited to eat what she made and she makes all these exotic things for them and they just gobble them right up I don't know if that's part of the tv show or not but you can never make it I don't care if it's tv (laughs) or not you cannot force that yeah and I love that her cookbook she has a cookbook about quick family meals I believe but she doesn't shy away from you know chocolate torts and things like that you know so she seems to have a really a well-rounded approach to eating, which I really appreciate. Well, and you know, my husband is British, but his British accent has faded over the years because he's lived here for so long. So I don't get like that hardcore British accent. I have to call my brother-in-law for that one. Uh, Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, There's something about it. I could just listen to it all day. Of course you can. Of course you can. So Diana, before we wrap it up, just tell everybody a little bit about the Baby Steps Dietitian, about your website and what people can find on your website. Oh, sure. So my website is dianakrice.com. I'm sure you'll have a link to it on your show notes. And the Baby Steps Dietitian is a blog that I started when I became a mom. And I realized that there are just so many factors to consider that you don't have to consider before you're a parent, you know, like, I used to just get home from work and saunter into the kitchen. And I didn't even know what I was going to make that night. And I saw what I had on hand and I might spend an hour doing it. And then my husband would get home and we would enjoy the meal together with a bottle of wine. And then the baby comes along <laughs> and no, 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 you cannot do that anymore. So my goal is really to help busy moms still feed their families nutritiously and not rely on you know the frozen dinners or the takeout or things like that. And also, I just noticed that the fellow moms that I know, how many questions there are about feeding kids, whether it's, you know, when do I start cow's milk or, you know, at what age can my kid have this kind of food? And I really believe that, you know, getting little kids off on the right track in terms of your approach to eating is just such a blessing to them. It sets them up. Yes, Ideally, they're going to be having a more nutritious diet. But beyond that, they're going to be having a healthy attitude towards food, Mm. which, you know, in the long run is going to spare them so much stress and turmoil because we got to eat. We got to eat every day. And so I want to help parents navigate how to feed their families. What are the healthy habits to really prioritize in terms of feeding their kids? And how do you get it all done when you've got a zillion other things to do? And especially... How do you get a family meal? How do you get everyone to sit down for a family meal when one kid's a toddler, one kid's in elementary school, and you don't have time to cook? Well, there are strategies, but it does take, you know, a little bit of advanced planning, and that's what I hope to share. Excellent. Well, it's a great website, and I will be doing a show on family meal time down the road. But, you know, there's just so many shows I can do, so many show (laughs) ideas, so little time. Well, Diana Rice with... The Kids Cook Monday and the Baby Steps Dietitian. Thank you for all of your tips and tricks for getting kids into the kitchen and for sharing that recipe with us. I cannot thank you enough. It's been a long time since we've been talking about having you on the show. So thanks again for giving us your time today. Well, thank you. I'm so excited to share the resources that we discussed. And, you know, if it helps even a couple of families, I mean, I know it'll help more than that, but, you know, it's totally exciting and worth it to me. So that was such a great show. Again, head on over to Liz's Healthy Table for the show notes, for the recipes, all the great things we talked about today. Spread the love by posting a review to iTunes. I'd appreciate it. Stop by and visit me on Facebook, Twitter, Pinterest, and Instagram. And as always, thanks for tuning in to Liz's Healthy Table.